Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Carmen and in this video I'm going to show you a natural dyeing project. So we have a Budleia uh, bush in the garden. English is not my first language so, so I had to look up the uh, English term. So it is Budleia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. In Dutch we call it Vlinderstruik, butterfly bush. There are lots of butterflies on it. And you can use the dried flowers of this bush to dye yellow. Um, yes, purple flowers um, usually result in yellow dye, which is fascinating. Um, if you know heather, like it all also is kind of like pink and purple that also gives a very vibrant yellow dye. Um, and with the Bodleia you have to, well you don't have to, but you can cut off the dried flowers to motivate the plant to grow more flowers. So usually it will have one large flower and then two little flowers at the kind of stem of that and once that main flower is dried out you can cut it and it will stimulate uh, the growth of the other flowers. So I have um, assembled quite a bit of dried Budleia flowers and I am going to be over dyeing some yarn that I previously dyed. One is a 50-50 wool and rami base. So a rami is a plant fiber and wool is a animal fiber. Uh, one thing that you need to know when you're dyeing yarns or fabrics is that animal fibers tend to get a deeper color result. So uh, this one, this base, is usually lighter than my 100% um, animal fiber bases. Uh, now this is also 80% wool, 20% rami, so it is, uh, it still has plant fiber, but I dyed these in the same pot previously and you can see that this one is darker than the 50% plant based one. Um, if you want to dye fabrics, those are usually 100% um, plant-based uh, plant fibers, so, uh, such as cotton um, or linen. Typically with any kind of fiber you want to mordant it, that's kind of pre-treat the fibers so that they can um, kind of suck up more dye. And what I usually use is alum, so A-L-U-M, alum, and you can get that at most kind of, um, what are those stores called? Uh, like you have loads of like biological grains and stuff, but also uh, protein shakes. <laughs> so it's kind of for the um, spiritual, spiritual by um, eating biological person, but also the want to get very muscular person. So I, yeah, I think that's strange. But um, because these customers tend to not be one and the same person, but you can um, usually get it there. Uh, I have a big pot and I ordered it online, but um, yes, so you want to treat it with alum, usually 20%, which means if you want to dye 100 grams of fiber, um, that you would need 20 grams of alum. That usually gives the best result, uh, but 15% usually also does a great job. Uh, these have been have already been dyed once, so these still have alum in it, I think. Um, so I'm not going to treat these, I'm just um, going to throw them in the dye once the dye is ready. But before we do any of that, we want to actually make the dye. So you um, cover the bodleia in water in a pot. The pot needs to be aluminum or stainless steel. Um, no iron. Usually when you um, get a big cooking pot at a thrift store, they're usually made of iron or have some percentage of iron in there and that will change the color of your dye. So you want to make sure it's, alum, <laughs> it's aluminum or um, stainless steel. You want to cover the flowers completely and then let it simmer. I think a maximum of 70 or 80 degrees. Um, usually you want it 
usually you can have it up to 90 degrees uh, but especially with yellow dye you want to keep the temperature a little bit on the lower side because um, if you simmer it on a lower temperature it will be more vibrant so if that's what you're going for if you're going for a bright kind of like sunflower yellow um, simmer at a lower temperature if you're fine with it being a little less vibrant it will uh, it will turn into a little bit more mustardy um, which is also very nice um, or yeah it will just it will just be a little bit less vibrant uh, if you simmer it higher or you know usually it's not done on purpose usually it's done by accident you kind of forget about the pot and then oh and now the color is less vibrant and you want to keep it at that temperature for about an hour and you don't have to have the stove on for the full hour usually uh, I turn it on for half an hour and then keep the lid on and um, turn off the stove uh, that saves you some gas or ele electricity and will still have a very high temperature and afterwards you just let it cool off naturally so you just leave it in there and then once it's fully cooled off you can strain the uh, liquid so take off uh, take out all of the flower bits and then you have the dye and then you can put in your yarn or fabric that you want to dye and repeat the process so heat it up until about 70 uh, degrees celsius i i forgot to mention that but yes celsius and keep it at that temperature for about an hour so again you only need to heat it for about 30 minutes and then turn it off and then let it cool off naturally and if it isn't vibrant enough yet you can repeat the step uh, heat it up and then cool it down again and that is basically the dyeing process now let's actually go and do it although there are still some some bits in there and I'm just going to put the yarn in already I'm not going to be heating it up today because it is very hot and I don't want any extra heat in the house but I thought I could use the heat of the Sun so I'm going to put the yarn in and then set the dye pot out into the Sun I'm reusing I'm using um, reusable tie wraps uh, you could also use regular tie wraps or just uh, pieces of string and I'm adding in another skein to over dye because I had more plant matter than I anticipated so I'm going to use that Squish the yarn so that the air bubbles come out, otherwise it will just float on top. So, there are still some bits of the flower in here and there, but those are way easier to get out when the yarn is dry. So, um, 
Yes, uh, let's backtrack a little bit. I uh, put the yarns in the pot and then left it out in the sun a little bit because it was super warm and I didn't want to heat up the house even more. Uh, and then in the evening, or was it in the morning? I don't know, when it was cooler, uh, I put it on the stove and heated it up for about half an hour and then turned the gas off. And I made sure that it didn't boil but still, I think I expected a more vibrant shade of yellow. Um, this is more vibrant than the others, or, or actually there's a, um, well it's a very slight difference, but, um, and yellow is a very difficult color to film and photograph, so I'm not sure if it shows up on screen, but this is the most vibrant one. It's, uh, let me see if I can describe it, uh, <laughs> perhaps a pale sunflower. Um, yeah, I really like this. This is on the 100% Merino base. Uh, then we have the 50% Rami, 50% Wool, which is just a little bit paler. Can you, see? you can see it like this. It's a little bit paler. So this is more of a... Um, <laughs> I want to say mustard mayonnaise. What is even mustard mayonnaise? Maybe straw? <laughs> that sounds very, um, yeah, not as beautiful as this yarn. But yeah, it's more straw colored. This one is a little bit more brown than the others. So it's a little bit, um... Yeah, also mustardy, sand, straw, um, yeah, but I still like it. And this will pair beautifully with the pinks and corals that I have. Uh, and this is the 70 or 80% Rami wool, and the rest is Rami. I think 80% wool, 20% Rami. Yeah, so they all caught the dye a little bit differently. And yeah, yellow dye is tricky because um, one, you have to make sure that you don't overheat it because otherwise it can lose the vibrancy. And two, you have to make sure uh, that you don't let it dry out in the sun. And also, you know, when, when you're storing the yarns or the fabric, whichever thing you have dyed, that you don't store it in an open cabinet because then uh, it might fade due to the sun. Actually, let me grab a skein where that has happened so you can see what it looks like. So lots of my yellow dyed yarns um, have been faded by the sun. And yeah, you can see it well with this one. So I put it in a closet like this. And yes, it is an open closet. And no, the sun does not face that wall directly. Um, yeah, it's the wall that catches the least amount of sun, so... But still, you know, that's that just goes to show. So it's in the cabinet like this. So it's like beige, almost white, and then at the other end. And you can see it like in, in the folds. That's the original color. And this was dyed with... Um, red onion. Onion skins do tend to fade very quickly, uh, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but I will say this is only the outer layer, so uh, most of the yarn is still the original color because it's in there, um, and the, the faded part will, you know, it will kind of stripe or you know, it will have some kind of effect. So it's not, it's not ruined, but uh, it's definitely not what I would like, um, you know, for yarns that I sold. So uh, I did sell a lot of these yarns and yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that some of them have faded. So yeah, it's, <laughs> um, that's just what happens with natural dyes. So this also, this is made with chervil, um, and it it has also faded.
yeah so do do just make a note of that um, keep it out of the sunlight and when you uh, make it into a garment or an accessory just also make sure that you hang it in an in a closed closet so yeah I think that concludes the experiment um, it is just really really fun because you know you just need a couple of flowers and the flowers have all stopped blooming so you know uh, it's it's of no use anymore so you can you totally don't have to feel guilty when you're snipping them off and you can create some dye with it so I hope you will give it a try, do let me know, and um, yeah, if you would like to see more natural dye experiments, do let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'd love to see you in a future video. Bye-bye!